Chapter four, because geometry is not a country somewhere near France. I was 14, it was my first day of high school. I was happy about that. And I was most especially excited about my first geometry class. Yep, I have to admit that isosceles triangles make me feel hormonal. Most guys, no matter what age, get excited about curves and circles, but not me. Don't get me wrong, I like girls in their curves, and I really like women in their curves, curvier curves. I spend hours in the bathroom with a magazine that has 1,000 pictures of naked movie stars. Yep, that's right, I admit that I masturbate. I'm proud of it, I'm good at it, I'm ambidextrous. And if there were professional masturbators league, I'd get drafted, number one, and make millions of dollars. And maybe you're thinking, well, you really shouldn't be talking about masturbation in public. Well, tough. I'm going to talk about it because everybody does it and everybody likes it. And if God hadn't want us to, wanted us to masturbate, then God wouldn't have given us thumbs. So I thank God for my thumbs. But the thing is, no matter how much time my thumbs and I spend with the curves of imaginary women, I am much more in love with the right angles of buildings. When I was a baby, I'd crawl under my bed and snuggle into a corner to sleep. I just felt warm and safe leaning into two walls at the same time. When I was eight, nine, and 10, I slept in my bedroom closet with the door closed. I only stopped doing that because my big sister, Mary, told me that I was just trying to find my way back into my mother's womb. That ruined the whole thing. Don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against my mother's womb. I was built in there after all. So I have to say that I am pro-womb but I have zero interest in moving back home, so to speak. My sister is good at ruining things. After high school, my sister just froze, didn't go to college, didn't get a job, didn't do anything. Kind of sad, I guess. But she is also beautiful and strong and funny. She is the prettiest and strongest and funniest person who ever spent 23 hours a day alone in a basement. Mary runs away. She is so crazy and random that we all call her Mary Runs Away. I'm not like her at all. I'm steady. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about school. Rowdy and I are planning on playing high school basketball. Last year, Rowdy and I were the best players in the eighth grade team. But I don't think I'll be very good. I don't think I'll be a very good high school player. Rowdy is probably going to start varsity as a freshman. But I figure the bigger and better kids will crush me. It's one thing to hit jumpers over eighth graders. It's a whole other thing to score on high school monsters. I'll probably be a bench warmer on C squad while Roundy goes on to all state glory and fame. <sighs> I am a little worried that Rowdy will start to hang around with the older guys and leave me behind. I'm also worried that he'll start to pick on me too. I'm scared he might start hating me as much of, as all the others do, but I'm more happy than scared. And I know that the other kids are going to give me crap for being so excited about school, but I don't care. I was sitting in a freshman class at Welpinet High School when Mr. P strolled in with a box full of geometry textbooks. And let me tell you, Mr. P is a weird looking dude. But no matter how weird he looks, the absolutely weirdest thing about Mr. P is that sometimes he forgets to come to school. Mr. P, class, nose hair, four feet tall and bald, dandruff, food stains, weigh 50 pounds, but only when he's carrying a 15 pound briefcase. Let me repeat, Mr. P sometimes forgets to come to school. Yep, we have to send a kid down to the teacher's housing compound behind the school to wake Mr. P, who is always conking out in front of his TV. That's right, Mr. P sometimes teaches class in his pajamas. He is a weird old coot, but most of the kids dig him because he doesn't ask too much of us. I mean, how can you expect your students to work hard if you show up in your pajamas and slippers? And yeah, I know it's weird, but the tribe actually houses all of the teachers in one bedroom cottages and musty old trailer houses behind the school. You can't teach at our school if you don't live in the compound. It was like some kind of prison work farm for our liberal white vegetarian do-gooder and conservative white missionary saviors. Some of our teachers make us eat bird seeds so we'll feel closer to the earth. 
and other teachers hate birds because they are supposedly minions of the devil. It is like being taught by Jekyll and Hyde. But Mr. P isn't a democratic, republican, Christian, or devil-worshipping freak. He is just sleepy. But some folks are absolutely convinced he is like this Sicilian accountant who testified against the mafia and had to be hidden by the secret witness relocation program. It makes some goofy sort of sense, I suppose. If the government wants to hide somebody, there's probably no more isolated, no place more isolated than my reservation, which is located approximately one million miles north of important and two billion miles west of happy. But geez, I think people pay way too much attention to the Sopranos. Mostly, I just think Mr. P is a lonely old man who used to be a lonely young man, and for some reason I don't understand. Lonely white people love to hang around lonelier Indians. All right, kids, let's get cracking, Mr. P said as he passed out the geometry books. How about we do something strange and start on page one? I grabbed my book and opened it up. I wanted to smell it. Heck, I wanted to kiss it. Yes, kiss it. That's right, I'm a book kisser. Maybe that's, ki maybe that's kind of perverted, or maybe that's just romantic and highly intelligent. But my lips and I stopped short when I saw this written on the inside front cover. This be book belongs to Agnes Adams. Okay, now you're probably asking yourself, who is Agnes Adams? Well, let me tell you. Agnes Adams is my mother. My mother. And Adams is her maiden name. So that means my mother was born an Adams, and she was still an Adams when she wrote her name in that book. And she was 30 when she gave birth to me. Yep. So that means I was staring at a geometry book that was at least 30 years older than I was. I couldn't believe it. How horrible is that? My school and my tribe are so poor and sad that we have to study from the same dang books our parents studied from. That is absolutely the saddest thing in the world. And let me tell you, that old, 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 decrepit geometry book hit my heart with the force of a nuclear bomb. My hopes and dreams floated up in the mushroom cloud. What do you do when the world has declared nuclear war on you? Arr! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop now.